Cardinals talking to draft prospects. We talking with draft analysts, including Trevor Sikama, the lead draft analyst for Pro Football Focus. Let's start here and go big picture with the Arizona Cardinals. We live it every day, a four-win season. Not great, but considering after 2022, a different feeling at least for us locally. What about nationally? What do you saw from the Cardinals this past season? Uh, you know, it, it sounds kind of funny to say this because you mentioned it's a four-win team, but I was really impressed by this team. And obviously they want more wins in the win column, but – how competitive this team was. And I, I'm not going to lie, from a national perspective, I looked at this roster, brand new coaching staff, uh, new front office, new guys at the helm. You knew it was going to be a different direction. They were going to kind of turn the page in a lot of ways. And so anytime it's a full rebuild in that way, you think it's going to take some time. So you wonder what the product is going to be, especially early on. And it just felt like, man, these guys really bought into – what Jonathan Gannon was selling very, very early on. The voice that they have in the building, you know, the direction that they have, a lot of these younger players are buying in. And that's normally something that's tough when you have that kind of regime turnover is you've got some of those young, newer pieces that, 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 that the new regime is bringing in, but you guys know you can't do all of that in one offseason. So there's a lot of guys that were brought in from, you know, an older coaching staff or the old general manager or whoever it was. And to get all of those players to buy in as early as Jonathan Gannon was able to get that from them, to me, that was super impressive. And that means the arrow is pointing up for this team. Obviously, Kyler was hurt at the beginning of the year. You get him back. You've got the franchise quarterback part figured out. And I think that the rest of the roster, I was just so impressed by how easily they were able to pick it up, how much contribution they got from some of those young guys, and the direction that they're going moving forward. Not just picking up the changes from the team as a whole, but Kyler Murray specifically only played eight games, so he didn't have the offseason or training camp. Physically right. being out on the field with this new coaching staff, some changes on the offense, being under center more. What impressed you about what you saw from Kyler Murray? You're saying, you know, franchise quarterback, but, right. but you know, what confirmed that from what you saw? Well, Kyler's just such a competitor, and I always felt that even when I was evaluating him coming out through the draft, and he was somebody who – you know, before he got hurt, he was playing at an MVP type of a level. And, and, and that, was, that was great to see him kind of achieve that ceiling because that's the question that you have for these kind of quarterbacks that you're drafting in the top five, top three, number one overall, is you want to be able to see that ceiling from them. So to get that from him a couple of years ago, he goes through the injury and you go, oh, man. What we love about Kyler is not only who he is as a passer because I think he's a great passer, but it's what he brings – as a runner as well it's that total quarterback package and when you have an injury like he did where it can affect a skill set like being a dual threat quarterback you go man is he gonna come back that same type of a player that's going to be that true dual threat and even though it looked a little bit different right the offense was a little bit different he still presented all of those threats and I still think that you know the fact that he was able to even come back a little bit at the end of last year to me shows that he he is invested in this coaching staff because that's a tough injury, right? There's a lot on the line when you're going through that injury to come back too early, um, you know, to not be able to trust yourself, not be able to trust the offense, all that kinds of stuff. And for him to be able to come back when he did, play as well as I feel like he was able to down the stretch, to me it just showed not only is he still confident in himself that that, that MVP type of ceiling, that MVP type of talent is still there, but also, again, just the buy-in. He wanted to get out there. He wanted to be the quarterback of this team. And to me, that just spoke volumes of, again, this team's going in the right direction. I think what Kyler did last year was just as big of a sign as maybe some of these young guys and all that. So a good first step under Monty Austin Ford and Jonathan Gannon. Now the next step, put pieces around Kyler Moore. What do you see as far as is that the line of scrimmage? Is that a playmaker? Probably both, but is there one that you would put ahead of another? Yeah, so, you know, I do a lot of mock drafts. We've got a mock draft simulator later over at PFF.com, and it is a lot of fun doing mock drafts for the Cardinals because they have so many picks, right? They've got the two first-round picks. They've got a second-rounder. they got a lot of third-rounders as well. So when you look at this team and you say, yeah, there are a lot of different areas where they can get better, they have a lot of firepower to be able to do that. And that's kind of – they set that up very, very well with what Austin Ford did last year. And I have – just so much respect for how he handled the draft last year. Somebody who clearly came in and was not just going to sit on his picks, right? All right, first time as general manager, I've got my picks, let's just try to nail. No, he, he actually took a wider approach and said, look, the name of the game is obviously drafting really good football players. you got to get good football players on your team. But there's also a 
mini game, a game within the game when it comes to the NFL draft where you can move up and back. And we saw him do that twice in the first round. And like to me, that shows this guy's not afraid to do what you need to do to get it done. Like I felt like they would have picked Paris at three last year. And you get in a situation where you move from three to 12, from 12 to six, and you pick the guy that you would have picked at three, and you get an extra first round and a third round pick out of it. So that was excellent for me. And then kind of going into this year, what I'm expecting from them is I love a lot of the players that they selected last year. I feel like it was a lot of good core guys who, you know, we were talking a little bit before we hit record, the type of guys, the type of players that you want in the locker room and on the team, you obviously need more of that. But I think a lot of this draft needs to be devoted to the trenches. Love B.J. Ojolari, love the Paris Johnson Jr. additions, but when it comes to that interior offensive line, perhaps another tackle spot, certainly interior defensive line as well, and then you need multiple good pass rushers. So even though you think you maybe got something in Ojolari, continuing to reload that. We saw that with the Philadelphia Eagles when they were able to really ascend the way they did, and Gannon saw this firsthand. This was a team that okay, maybe it wasn't their most pressing need on the roster, but continuing to uh, invest in trench play, offensive line, defensive line, getting that next man up for uh, whenever the next contracts were going to come up or if an injury were to happen. Like, you've just got to continue to invest, and with so many premium picks within the first three rounds for Arizona, I think that's where you definitely have to look. Now, it's interesting because you say, all right, well, what about at the very top? At four, we've got... Uh, Options like Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, I think all three of those players would be fantastic playmakers for them. But of the majority of the selections that they'll have rounds one through three, I think it's got to be you know, eating your vegetables, if you will. My friend Alex Clancy says that all the time. He's like, you got to invest in the trenches. It's not always the sexy picks, but that's what's going to build the team the way that you need to. Is this rookie draft class, what's expected of it to be deep enough at the tackle position, or should the Cardinals stay at four and, and use that prime spot to get one of those top tackles? Yeah, you know, I, I think that this is a really good tackle class. I think it's a really good class overall I think for the premium positions wide receiver lockdown corner offensive tackle uh, defensive line like I think there's a lot of really good players and it's deep there but all that to say if you need one of those players if they, like let, let's say if they get into a situation where they're comfortable with Paris Johnson Jr. at one of the tackle spots but they know they're really going to need another one that is something that you would still consider at number four. That you maybe and maybe it's not at four. Maybe it's a little bit of a trade down. Maybe Austin Fort goes back into that bag of moving. You can get a really good offensive lineman. I think Joe Alt from Notre Dame is a plug and play type of an offensive tackle. Now he's only played left tackle, so that might mean if, if the Cardinals end up drafting him, it might mean that Paris Johnson's got to stay on the right. Maybe they're okay with that. Obviously, he's had that experience, but that's something that you have to think about. Guys like Olu Fushano from Penn State, Talise Fuaga from Oregon State, uh, J.C. Latham from Alabama, Amarius Mims from Georgia. There are so many different players in this class of the offensive line position that I think could be picked anywhere from pick uh, four, probably is where we're starting this conversation, all the way to selection number 20. You could, he, you could see all those guys coming off the board. So there's no doubt about it. It's a deep offensive tackle class. You can get one later. Like let's say they went with a wide receiver at pick number four. I do think there's going to be a viable offensive tackle option for them available at the back end of the first round. You might need to trade up to get the one that you really want, but I still think that that is in the cards for them. But that's anytime you're talking about offensive tackle, edge rusher, premium interior defensive tackle, you're having a conversation where, where you have to come to the conclusion that the earlier you pick them, the better chance you have at them really being that high ceiling player that you need. You mentioned mock drafts. Your latest mock, as far as at number 27, you had the Cardinals going cornerback with Nate Wiggins out yep. of Clemson. The cornerback draft class overall, is it a good one? Is it deep? How would you assess the secondary as far as, again, another need for the Cardinals just not – in the trenches, maybe not a priority, but something the Cardinals probably need to look at. Well, it's huge. You know, I think that they're still looking for somebody, and maybe this player's on the roster, but they're looking for somebody to really step up as that, like, CB1 lockdown type of a player. Maybe they end up drafting that player this year. Maybe they're already on the roster, but that is no doubt a role that somebody needs to really step up, I think, in 2022. So the corner class, luckily for Arizona, 
is stacked. I mean, it is really stacked this year. I think that five corners could go in the first round this year. Um, I, I love Cooper DeJean from Iowa, Quinion Mitchell from Toledo, Terion Arnold from Alabama, Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama, Nate Wiggins, who I had going to the Cardinals in my mock draft. All five of those guys I could see as first-round picks. And then even getting into the second round a little bit, a guy like TJ Tampa, who is a bigger, longer corner from Iowa State, I think it would be a great option for them. Kamari Laster, who's played for one of the best defenses in the country at Georgia over the last couple of years. He has been fantastic. And then there's a lot of really great slot corner options as well. Mike Sandra still, um, Javon Bullard. I just feel like in this corner class, it again lines up very well with how many picks the Cardinals have. I don't think they have to force it in the first round. I think there are certainly options in round two and round three that they could, t- they could dip into the corner class at that point and still get a really good contributing player for them. Leave us with this at the Super Bowl and Radio Row. You're always looking for that big get, whether that's an athlete, a celebrity, but you were sought out by someone, and it was an Arizona Cardinals wide receiver by the name of Michael Wilson who wanted to meet you yes. at the Super Bowl. Yes, that does not often happen. You know, it, re- <laughs> it really does not. It's not often that a player searches out a, uh, a a draft analyst like myself, but Michael was awesome. That was the first time I really got to meet him in person, and the reason why he wanted to come up and say hello was because last year during the draft process, I was banging the table for this guy. You know, you go through these exercises and people go, okay, who are, you know, some your guys in the class? You know, who somebody that you like that maybe isn't the most popular player but you think is going to play really well. And every time I went through these exercises, one of the first names that I always mentioned was Michael Wilson from Stanford. Loved the Stanford tape. He just had a really bad, uh, like, injury history. And it was just, like, bad luck. It was a lot of bad luck injuries. And I was just going, man, you go back to his sophomore year, at Stanford, just as a sophomore, they were running the passing offense through him. And so any every other time from that point on, when he was on the field, he was their focal point. I got to watch him in Mobile at the Senior Bowl, and I thought his footwork was fantastic. He was strong at the catch point. He understood the subtle techniques of how to gain separation at the NFL level, which is really important because when you get to the pros, everybody's fast. You know, like, like everybody is a great athlete, but it's those guys that can win kind of between the ears, kind of setting players up uh, and just understanding the mastery of the position that I love to gravitate towards. And Michael Wilson was one of those guys. And so throughout the process, I kept telling people, I was like, Michael Wilson, he's my guy, he's my guy, he's my guy. And uh, when, when we were at the, the Super Bowl Media Week a couple of weeks ago, he came up and he said, hey, just wanted to meet you. I appreciate everything kind of that you were saying about me last year. And I was asking him, I was like, hey, how was the year? Like, how's like how's the team and everything? He's like, dude, it's awesome. Like, it's great in Arizona. The culture is fantastic. I asked him, I was like, how you feeling? You healthy? He's like, nah. He's like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. This, we're all good to go. Uh, we're all set for a really good year here in, uh, in 2024 as well. So it was awesome to meet, uh, meet him in person for the first time. So that was really cool. Uh, Danny and I can both attest. I mean, you won't meet a better individual than Michael Wilson as far as the person is concerned. And, yes, obviously the talent stands out as well. Absolutely. Great character. Is there, if, that, if Michael Wilson was your player – you were talking about last year, maybe one of those later rounds, day two, early day three. Is there a player this year that's caught your eye? There's there's two players that uh, that I love, and uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll be Cardinals. Maybe maybe we'll, maybe we'll hit it two years in a row with my guys being Arizona Cardinals, and I can come on next year and talk about them. <laughs> All right, Washington State safety Jaden Hicks. I like him a ton because he brings a lot of versatility. He, he's noted as a box safety, but he can play in the slot as well. I love his story, and I remember reading something about him when he was a true freshman at Washington State. He got to that level and he was like, I don't even know if I'm good enough to play in the Pac-12. He kind of like had those self-doubts and and it really forced him to get into the film room more, say like, okay, I just can't, I can't coast. Like I was able to coast a little bit in high school, was really talented. I got to really work at this. He got in the lab, he got in the gym, he got in the film room, and he has become one of the most reliable safeties in the country. So, like, that work ethic, part of his story for him to get to this point, absolutely love. And then a guy that I already mentioned, Michigan slot corner Mike Samra still. I mean, it's hard to not watch what Michigan did this past year and not love what you saw on the field from him. He is such a fiery competitor. He's small, but he sets the tone. He'll come up and tackle anybody. He can play that safety spot. He can play that nickel corner spot. And I just love the way he approaches the game as somebody who just is not afraid of any assignment that's in front of him. So those are two secondary guys that, I don't know, I guess off the top of my head, if I had an early my guys list, it would be one of those two guys around there. We'll see if you're two for two. There you go. Yeah. Trevor, enjoy the conversation. Again, appreciate it. And, uh, again, Pro Football Focus, we enjoy it. 
It's a great tool. And, uh, again, appreciate your time. Appreciate it, guys. Anytime. We really could have talked football with Trevor for the rest of the day. But, yes, time is limited, but you could just see the passion that he has for the game and then some good things to say about the Arizona Cardinals overall. Eat your vegetables. Craig, I thought that was pretty interesting. I think I had a natural kind of reaction of, whoa, only because, yes, it's, it makes sense for the Cardinals to look into taking an offensive tackle with a fourth overall pick. So many of these mock drafts have the Cardinals taking a wide receiver fourth overall. And so for Trevor to say, you know, it's important to eat your vegetables, a.k.a. attack the trenches, because that's where you, you know, you have to win at the line of scrimmage to be successful in any aspect of this game, I thought was pretty interesting. It's going to be a fascinating decision for Monty Austin Ford and that front office should the board fall that way everyone's anticipating quarterbacks going one two and three we'll see what happens at the end of april for more coverage here from indianapolis make sure you go to azcardinals.com and the arizona cardinals official youtube channel